In this video, I want to talk about the degrees of freedom, which I've introduced very briefly in the previous video when we were looking at the critical values uh, in the table. Um, but I just want to kind of explain what that's really all about. I, I'm not going to go into too much depth, um, but hopefully you kind of get an inkling as to what it means. Now, I've put this up here for interest sake. Uh, this is uh, the equation for the uh, chi-squared distribution. Um, now, there's a few things in there that uh, you won't know. So the V shape that we've got here, that's the bit that I'm interested in in this video. And we refer to that as the degrees of freedom. And it's not a V, it's new. So... Uh, NU is how it's spelt, that Greek letter is spelt. So NU, new, and that is the degrees of freedom that you see here. Um, and I'll explain how it's calculated in a moment. The only other thing in there that you're probably not having seen before is this thing here. This is a capital gamma. This is the gamma function that is within this. Um, so the chi-squared distribution is a special case of the gamma distribution. Um, and the gamma function that you see there is a generalized form of the factorial function. So the gamma function allows you to, um, uh, it allows you to find essentially what, um, one half factorial would be equal to. So it essentially goes right. If this is what the factorial function does, let's um, have a function that joins all those points up. Essentially, that's what the gamma function is. Um, that's a, that's well. That's one way of looking at it. Anyway, um, I met the gamma function as part of my uh, degree. Um, when I did a third year project investigating fractional calculus. So um, I'm going a bit off topic here, but um, uh, something, uh, something that you can obviously Google and have a look up, uh, what is fractional calculus? Um, that's where I met the gamma function as part of my degree program. So degrees of freedom. What is it? I mean, that's there for interest sake, so you can completely ignore that. If you want to put your thumb over the screen and just like go, right, I don't want to even look at that, that's perfectly fine. The degrees of freedom uh, essentially is stemming from quite a basic problem. If, let's say I told you that there were five numbers, okay? And these five numbers, all add up to 10. Now, how many of those numbers would I have to tell you um, in order for you to be able to definitely say which numbers go where? Okay, so let's say, for example, I put in 2 here. Okay, can you fill in the remaining four numbers? Mm, no. Okay, so how about if I put a four there? Can you fill in the rest of them? Can you definitely say what they are? No. Okay, so maybe we have six. So now we've got 12 there. Can you fill in what the remaining two are? Mm, no. Okay, so let's have negative one in there now. Now, can you fill in what the remaining one is? Ah, well, hopefully you're saying yes. Yes, I can. Uh, that is now minus one. Okay, so only when you had four of the five could you actually fill in what's left. Okay, so that meant that there were four degrees of freedom. Okay, there were four degrees of freedom that allow me to choose whatever numbers I liked to go into those first four spaces. The last one I had no choice over. Okay, that's how you want to see what degrees of freedom are like. Now, if we extend this, because we're going to be dealing with a table of values, 
So um, let's say uh, it doesn't really need headers, but I'll just put in some A, B, C, S, T, U. Okay. Right, and we're going to put in total. And total. Okay. So let's say um, the these uh, add up to forty. These add up to twenty, and these add up to thirty. Okay, and it all adds up to ninety, of course. Uh, these add up to ten. These add up to fifty. And so that limits my choice now, so that's going to have to be 30. OK, so let's say I've told you those totals. And now I say, right, how much of this grid do I now need to fill in? So how many of those nine numbers do I need to fill in before you're able to complete the grid? OK, how many do I need to write in? OK, so let's say um, we say that this is 5, OK? Can you fill in the rest of the grid? No. OK, so let's say that this is, uh, let's go with 2. Can you fill in the rest of the grid? No, but I can fill in the rest of that row, OK? So I don't need any more values in that top row in order to fill that in. OK. So let's say that that's 10. Can you fill in the rest of the table? No, but I can fill in that one now. So I can now fill in that one and that one. But I'm stumped on the rest. Can't do the rest. OK. So what if I say that this one's 9? How about now? Well, now I can fill in that one, I can do that one, I can do that one, and I can do that one. And if I can do all those ones, I can also get that one as well. So now I only needed those four to be filled in in order for me to fill in the rest of the table. So there were four degrees of freedom. So... A quick way of being able to calculate this, the degrees of freedom, is to do the number of rows take away 1, which in our case was 3 take away 1, so 2, times by the number of columns take away 1, which was 3 take away 1, so 2. So in our case, we get 2 times 2, so new, the number of degrees of freedom, would be 4. OK, because there were four values that I had to put in before you were able to fill in the rest of the table. That's essentially what we mean by degrees of freedom in this case. And the degrees of freedom that you get, each one gives you a different um, chi-squared distribution. OK, so they all look slightly different. It's worth exploring and see if you can see uh, what... Uh, the different distributions look like. Um, so try Googling them, uh, having a look online, and see if you can find a diagram that shows it. There's quite a neat one that's on uh, the Wikipedia page for the chi-squared distribution, so you can see them all in different colours, um, how the degrees of freedom affects the shape of the curve.